<laughs> Do you want to come now? Uh, in what way? Hello, and welcome to Heart Cage, in which you play as a detective investigating a serial killer. But along the way, it seems like several residents of this town have taken a very keen interest in you. Let's get started. Hey, let me just rename myself to Yinny. Four months ago. Oh, these boxes are so heavy. What's inside them? I carried one cardboard box after another, heading to the second floor where the new office was. I was supposed to be enjoying my vacation. Why did it turn out like this? A week ago. It was payday, so I rushed into the office with great excitement. I saw 10 cases this month. The bonus will be huge. I can finally enjoy my free vacation once I get my pay. Good morning, boss. Hey, you're in a good mood today. I am in a good mood. Sure, I've already booked my flight. Ah. Well, regarding that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but it seems your vacation has to be postponed. Huh? Permission from a mysterious client? I took the letter. In the section was the word confidential in bright red ink. The assignment was to investigate some strange happenings in Usada Town, but no further details were given. Usada Town? I've never heard of this place. That's an outlying town in the south. Though it's far from the city, the quality of life is fairly high there. But isn't this a little suspicious? We don't know the client's name. The letter was really vague, too. Thing is, why should I postpone my vacation because of this suspicious commission? Ah, don't worry about that. The client is not that suspicious, actually. Wait a minute. How much did the client pay for the deposit? <laughs> well, well. I'm not that kind of person who only cares about money. <laughs> I think you care about money. Speak. Not much. Just around seven digits. Seven, seven digits. Is that in like dollary dues, which is the uh, canonical Australian currency, or is that in like another currency? I'll try to dodge my sharp gaze. You didn't take the deposit, did you? What's the problem? We always take the deposit first. I knew it! It's a generous amount, but we shouldn't accept commissions from an anonymous person like this. How are we supposed to complete the commission without any details? <laughs> Things will work out alright. You are so lucky that you are so boobily in the chest. Otherwise, I will, I will kick your butt. Go by yourself then. <laughs> I'm not going to postpone my vacation because of this. I haven't taken a vacation in a long time. Please don't. I'm dealing with a lot of important commissions already, and it's just you and me in the office. You know that. You're the only one I can ask. Don't, puppy dog Ivy. Buck made a pleading face with watery eyes, but I just wanted to punch him in the face. How about I quit now so it's just you in the office? If you solve the case, I'll give you half the commission fee. Deal? I will not yield. Sixty? I... um... Please, our detective ace, hey? Ugh, damn it! So I can take my vacation immediately after I solve the case, right? Sure. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes, then. I'll arrange an accommodation for you right away. It just so happens that I have a spacious apartment over there. And it's not in use for a long time. Should be enough to serve as a living place and temporary office. A temporary office? If it's a quick case, I can just stay at a hotel. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to tell you that uh, the commission period is four months. F four months? You can take other daily commissions while investigating and experience what it's like to be the president. Interesting, eh? Oh, Aww, four months till my vacation. The, f the days flew by. I was already at the building of our temporary office. What mysterious client? What experience? All of these are just excuses for this unwanted apartment. <laughs> hey, don't worry about the rent. Consider it as a gift from me. Yeah, but not have to pay any rent. But if you earn a lot from the daily commissions, I don't mind you sharing the profits with me. I'm not sharing. Damn, Clark. Worst boss ever. He wasn't practically my foster father, I would have quit a long time ago. I look around and find all the furniture is new and has already been installed. It seems someone did the cleanup before I arrived. Did Clark arrange for this? I thought the apartment would be as messy as his place back home. Alright, this place actually looks kinda comfy. It's pretty nice to just hang out here, it'd be perfect if I weren't here for work. Oh well, things will work out alright. A cat! A cat's meow from out of nowhere brought me back to reality. 
I bent down and found a furball hiding under the cabinet. Oh, where does this lovely fellow come from? I extend my arms under the table, and I catch the orange kitten. It didn't resist. Instead, it relaxed in my arms and purred softly. Oh my, how cute! Oh, this cutie pie has a tag around its neck. Cat Paradise Coffee. Hmm, that name sounds familiar. Just then, I could hear hurried footsteps right outside the door. Oh my god. Oh, he was so cute. Ryan. He was so cute. Look at him. He's so cute. A man wearing an apron appeared from behind the door. His silvery white hair stood out against the dark complexion. But what first caught my attention was his breathtakingly handsome face. The kitten immediately jumped from my arms, ran to its owner, and rubbed against his feet. Oh, you naughty little kitty. <laughs> How'd you get up there? <laughs> Is he talking to me or the cat? I noticed the man's apron had the same logo as the kitten's tag. Oh, it's the name of the cafe downstairs. Excuse me. You. When he finally looked into my eyes, he suddenly stopped talking for a few seconds. What's wrong? N no, it's nothing. He looked away in embarrassment, then turned his eyes on me again. Nice to meet you. I'm Dane Godiobi, your landlord. Oh, so you're the landlord. Feel free to call me Dane. Nice to meet you too, I'm Yiddy. I work on the Clark Detective Agency. I'll stay here for a few months and set up a temporary detective office. Hmm, I've heard about it from Mr. Clark himself. He often told me about you. <laughs> really? I hope he didn't say anything awkward. Why, he always says that you're his best student. Is that so? But why would Clark tell you about me? You must know him very well then. <laughs> We've known each other for a long time. We're old friends, I'd say. So please, make yourself at home. Just let me know if you need any help. I will take good care of you for Mr. Clark's sake. Oh, I bet you will. Dane gave me a soft smile, which made my heart flutter. That's very kind of you, thank you. I'll try my best not to cause any trouble. I am here for you too. We can support each other. You're as kind and lovely as ever. Sorry? Oh, nothing. I'm just glad that you're moving in. I just live upstairs, and I'm running a pet cafe downstairs. Feel free to stop by any time. God, I'm so in love with him. Really? I'm a coffeeholic. I come every morning. <laughs> Do you want to come now? Uh, in what way? I'd love to, but I've still got some packages to pick up. You mean these at the door? Uh, when are these with you? I just brought them up. I've never met such a nice landlord before. Then I noticed that the boxes he was holding were also my belongings. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay. Leave it to me. Wait here, I'll bring him inside. Aww. I tried to stop him nervously, but he brought all the boxes inside without a word. <sighs> Done. Now you can come and have some coffee, right? He reached out his hand, and I was captivated by his dazzling smile again. Consider it a gift for finding this little one for me, okay? It's hard to say no, considering all the things he's done. I followed Dane into the coffee shop. The interior design gave off a cozy vibe. There seemed to be no customers at this time and the cats and dogs were still napping. The air was infused with a rich aroma of coffee. Wow, this tastes so good! Dane, you're so talented! Really? I'm happy that you like it. God, he's so cute. I was afraid you wouldn't. Why? It's the best coffee I've ever had. How come I've never heard of such a fantastic cafe? As a coffee hall, this place really should have been on my radar. I can make it for you every day if you like it. Sure, I feel so blessed. Is there anyone else living in the building? I'd like to say hi. Nope. The floor you're living on is the only one that's rented out. I see. I thought there were other people living here. So, when are you going to open up your business? Um, well, maybe a week from now. I need some time to adapt to the town. Is there anything wrong? Are you feeling uneasy? Um, oh, do I flirt? I did feel a bit uneasy, but I'm much better now after having your coffee. Really? Is my coffee that magical? Maybe it's more... somehow I feel relaxed when you're around. Maybe it's because you're so friendly. I'll do my best. <laughs> Please, let me know if you need anything. Ah, uh, speaking of which, Dane, can I ask you something? Hmm? I know it's a bit odd to ask like this, but have you heard of any strange things happening in Usada Town? Strange things? Yeah, like suspicious people or weird happenings? Hmm... I haven't heard of anything unusual happening recently. I see. That's good to hear. 
Sorry, but it's my occupational habit. I just want to know more about this town. It's fine. It's good to be curious. If I find anything strange, I'll let you know at once. By the way, I noticed that earlier. What's on that poster? Oh, it's a big festival we have here every year. Is that band the guest performer? Yes, they're quite famous as an indie band. Most of the members used to live here. They come back every year and perform for the festival. That's so cool. I'd love to watch their live performance. Are you interested? Yeah, they look cool. I used to listen to bands a lot. That's surprising. Hmm? It's nothing. Oh, it's getting late. Are you going out? Yeah, I want to go out and get some daily supplies and explore the town a bit. Alright, stay safe. Wait a minute. Hmm? Here's my phone number. Call me anytime if you need something. <laughs> if possible, I'd like to be the first person you ask for. Oh, so cute. Dan looked a bit serious. You shouldn't trust others easily when you come to a new place. But I can trust you? Uh-huh. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm a stranger to you, too. But, as your landlord, I'll do my best to help you when you're in need. Seems very sweet. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Dane. I didn't expect to meet such a friendly landlord on the first day. Guess this business trip isn't so bad after all. And the coffee he made was so good. It'll keep me energized for work every day. I hope we can get along well in the future. She didn't deny that I was a stranger. So it seems she has indeed forgotten about me. Oh? <sighs> You're interested in others already. Oh? I've got to pay more attention. Oh, wait, so I knew him already? Oh, so this cafe selling red bean buns for 136 yen and I really- I would like a red bean bun. I observe my surroundings while checking the navigation app on my phone. This town's environment is even better than I imagined. Not only does it have all the facilities, but it also has such a stunning scenery. And the air is much fresher than in the city. I can't believe I only just found out about this town. It must be so comfortable to really live here. By the way, why do I have the sun warm feeling in my chest? Could it be the hot weather? But today's temperature is not that high. I was lost in my thoughts and didn't realize there was someone else on the street with me. Oh! I bumped into someone coming around the corner. And with a crash, we both fell to the ground. The person's belongings were scattered all over the ground, so I immediately helped them to pick them up. I'm so sorry, I spaced out there for a moment. <laughs> the man in front of me raised his head to look me in the eye. Such a beautiful hair color, and such stunning eyes. He looks like a doll with his porcelain skin. Are you alright? I tried to help him up, but he slapped my hand away. I'm fine. <sighs> Wait, what is this smell? Do I stink? Also, I really like Enox's voice. It's really breathy. He moved a little closer to me. Is that from you? What smell? I'm not quite sure what you mean. Then I noticed that his arm had been grazed in the fall. Oh, wait, you're hurt. Oh, he's so cute. <gasps> Leave me be! <laughs> I tore a small piece from my shirt as I didn't have any bandages or handkerchiefs with me. What, what are you doing? Just hold still. I can help. It's better to bandage the wound just in case and disinfect it later. Hey! I said there's no need for that! <sighs> this smell... Do I stink? Why is he moaning? His face flushed, and he covered his nose and mouth with his hand. Oh my, could that be me? Sorry, it won't take long. I focused on bandaging his wound and didn't notice a bulge in his face. Oh my god. Here you go, I'll buy some antiseptic from the drugstore nearby. Uh, get off! Don't come any closer! Whoa! Oh. He slapped my hand away, stood up and quickly ran off. Please, please wait, sir! He instantly disappeared behind the alley, but something had fallen from him. What's this? Hmm, it's a handkerchief and a card. Enox, the chemist. This should be his business card. There's a phone number. I should call him later and return this handkerchief. I really didn't mean to freak him out like that. Maybe I can clear the air next time we speak. He's a bit strange though. Why does his face turn so red? Do I really smell that off? I showered not so long ago. Anyway, where was I heading? Oh right, thank you for shopping with us. The navigation app guided me to the large supermarket nearest to the office. It was even bigger than I had expected. Just like the boss said, this town is developed like a city. The facilities are convenient and the stores offer a wide range of goods. I never thought it was a remote town in the countryside after all, I've never heard of it. 
All right, I got everything I need. It's still early. I can do some wandering around. Smack. Again? A little girl bumped into me, and her father holding her hand stopped with her. I'm sorry, madame. It's okay. I picked up the teddy bear from the ground. Is this yours? The little girl looked about to cry and hesitated for a few seconds before taking the bear. Hmm? Come on, let's go already. The little girl's father pulled her impatiently, as if he was in a hurry to leave. There's something off about this man. Although you shouldn't judge a person by appearance, this father and daughter pair gave me an awkward feeling. The little girl suddenly pulled on my sleeve and wouldn't let go. Something was wrong. Let's go. Wait a moment. Are you this girl's father? The man turned his head to me. He was stunned for a second. What's your problem? Sure, I'm a father. Is that true? Do I do the, do I do the little uwu voice? <laughs> Alright. You're not my daddy. Looking at me like I was a savior. The little girl who had been so silent suddenly shouted out so bravely. Hey brat, what did you say? God, did you bite me, you fucking kid? I immediately grabbed the man's wrist and twisted it with all my strength. It hurts! The man released the child because of the sudden pain, and the little girl quickly hid behind me. You were kidnapping her, you bastard! Oh, damn it! Don't even try, or I'll break your arm. I could finally use my Aikido training. I knew it would come in handy one day. Don't think I won't fight back. Even though I had both of his hands suppressed, the man had a knife in his inner sleeve. He almost managed to cut my face, but I dodged by instinct. I should have known he had a weapon on him. Whoa! I stepped back while protecting the child, and a crowd began to gather nearby, but no one dared to come close. I almost made it, why'd you have to get in my way? You have the nerve to say that, you damn kidnapper. This kid, huh? The child behind me had run away when I wasn't looking. The kidnapper was looking frantically for her. There you are, how dare you run away from me? Watch out! I dived down and immediately hugged the child tightly in my arms and shielded her from the kidnapper. But am I her? What happened? Some spherical object had struck the man's head, knocking him flat out on the ground. The fallen man was covered with something red. It looked like a murder scene. Oh my god, somebody smashed his head in. Hey, wait, are these watermelon seeds? I took a closer look. The kidnapper was still breathing, but he was out cold. <sighs> what a waste. I hope Aww. Mrs. Josie won't blame me for that. Oh my god, Luke is so hot. Luke is my favorite. God, by far, Luke is gorgeous. Look at him. I was planning to make shaved ice with it. A tall man jumped down from somewhere high. Kidnapping a child in broad daylight, huh? The dictionary should update the page of foolhardy with your name on it. The black haired man took out a pair of handcuffs and put them on the downed criminal. Investigator Luke! Oh, Tom, you came just in time. This guy's a kidnapper, plus harming people with intention. Investigator Luke, you didn't knock his head with a watermelon, did you? What's the problem? He didn't even deserve a watermelon. But if you arrest criminals like this every time... So what? You got a problem with that? It's not the first time this guy's done this. Who on earth let him escape? There was a smile on the black-haired man's face, but there was a fierce anger in his gaze. Don't let me see him again. Understood. I'll, I'll take him back now. The other officer dragged the unconscious man away, glancing my way as he passed. Ah, <sighs> for God's sake. Oh? Oh no, oh my god, not the freaking chest harness. Are you alright? No, I'm not alright. Fuck! <laughs> the black haired man bent down with a smile and reached out his hand towards me. I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> oh, fuck. God, that chest harness is criminal. A subtle fragrance lingered when he moved. I spotted a charming face under his curly black hair. His shirt clung to his well-built body, showing the contours of his muscular frame. If I hadn't heard the conversation just now, I would have mistaken him for a celebrity. A new face. Oh, I, I just moved into town today. I'm uni and I'll open a detective agency nearby. So, you're Miss Detective, huh? <laughs> no wonder you have such good insight. Well, I have to admit, you got good skills, though. You look like a little bunny. Hey, l little bunny? Hi there, name's Luke. I've got dispatched here from the city as an investigator. I moved here just three months ago. An investigator? Is something happening here? Oh? He showed a hint of surprise and narrowed his eyes as if something had aroused his interest. <laughs> Who knows? Anything can happen here. I really like his voice. Oh my god. His ambiguous response only made me more suspicious. I like the look in your eyes. Why are you so sultry? What? Your eyes sparkle with curiosity. May I have your hand? Before I could react, he had already grabbed my hand. Here's my phone number. 
Just call me if you need anything. I've got plenty of time. Oh. I might share something interesting with you. I'll, I'll give you my card too. Oh. Oh. Oops, I didn't bring my business cards with me. Please wait a second. I grabbed a receipt from my pocket and wrote- Sorry, I didn't have my card with me. This is the only thing I can give you. Feel free to get in touch if there's anything I can help with. He took the receipt from my hand and chuckled. <laughs> it's cute. Thanks, I'll keep it. See you next time, little bunny. Oh, I like him. I looked at the man's back with confusion. He was a bit strange, but there was something about him. It's just... How on earth do I look like a little bunny? <sighs> what a long day. I really didn't expect... I really didn't expect to help catch a kidnapper on the first day here. It really was a thrill. When I patted my pockets, I found something that didn't belong to me. Oh? It's the handkerchief and the card that the man in the white robe dropped this morning. It's still early. I should call and ask him about it. The phone rang for a long time, but nobody answered. Just as I was about to give up, somebody picked up. Who is it? Oh, hi. My name's Zinni. The person who bumped into you this morning? Mm. <laughs> huh? You... Uh, how do you know my phone number? Oh, sorry. Because you dropped your business card and handkerchief. I wanted to give them back to you. When would be a convenient time for you? I can come find you. I don't want any more. Just drop it. Uh, but... Call ended. What the heck? What's wrong with him? He doesn't have to be so rude. Enoch's on the other side. What's wrong with her? She doesn't have to call in so suddenly. The man hung up the phone angrily. The table in front of him was covered with unknown drugs. Damn it! None of these tranquilizers work. Why? He looked down. The bulge was still there. The voice of that woman reminded him of that scent. This was the first time Enoch's met someone who smelled so sweet. Usually, all people smell nauseating to Enoch's. What he smelled changed with his emotions, but it was always unpleasant. <sighs> Who was that woman today? Uh, these pants are too tight. Damn it! I've never experienced something like this in my life. Such humiliation! That woman... I must kill her. Hey, hang on a second. I don't deserve this. And I thought you were cute. I opened the commission documents to have a closer look, although I had already read it several times. Please head to Usuna town and investigate the strange events that have happened in the area. The investigation period will be 4 months, which may be extended depending on the situation. An additional commission fee will be paid. That's all? It's so suspicious that, that normally we won't even read it. I did encounter some strange people in a kidnapper today, but I wouldn't say the town is strange. Well, except for that investigator named Luke, it's obvious that he's not an ordinary investigator. And what he said was intriguing. Could he be here for something special too? Five, five million US dollars. The most eye-catching part of the entire commission document is this terrifying amount. If it weren't already paid, it would definitely sound like a scam. This amount alone is enough for the detective agency to operate for years. But that said, what kind of investigation requires this amount of money? Why couldn't they provide more details when they're willing to pay that much? Park's responses are also strange. He wouldn't accept such a mysterious commission normally, even though he loves money. Could he have been threatened? The space with a signature didn't contain a full name. Only the letter W was written in ballpoint pen. W? Is this some kind of code or title? It may even be an organization rather than an individual. For now, the only thing I can do is pay special attention to people and things starting with the little W. Ugh. I feel like I'm walking through a fog. And why hasn't Clark returned my calls? He's read my messages, but he never replied. It's normal for him to disappear for a time, but this is my first time on such a long business trip. How can he be so heartless? Stupid old man. How can he say that he treats me like a daughter? I turned around and looked at the photo on the table. There was a photo of Clark and me on my first work day. Back in those days, I was still a rookie who knew nothing except how to argue with my supervisor all the time. But to be honest, if Clark hadn't taken me in, I never would have become a detective. If that hadn't happened, when I was little, my family got involved in a serial murder case. Little Yinny suddenly became alone in the world. At the time, Clark was investigating the police with their investigation. He took me in and provided me with education while training me to be a detective. The murderer died at the scene. I still vividly remember what happened back then. <sighs> I'm thinking about it again. When will I ever be able to get over it? The murder is already dead. The case was solved. I'm an experienced detective now. I really shouldn't be this weak. I should do some research about the town today and start investigating tomorrow. Oh god, what? Okay, that kind of scared the crap out of me. The glass behind me suddenly shattered with a loud bang. Huh? 
The sound was so loud and close to me that it nearly pierced my eardrums. I turned around and saw that something had broken one of the room's windows. What? what Strange things really do happen in this town. I immediately saw a stone fall to the ground along with shards of glass from the broken window. Who would do such a thing? I picked up the stone and I noticed it had some words carved into it. Come down. The answers you seek are here. W. W? It was the same signature as the mysterious client. But could it really be the same person? It seems too convenient. In any case, this person knows why I'm here and the town's secrets. They could have chosen a nicer way to reach me though. How am I going to explain to Dane that my window's broken on the first day I move in? Come down was written on the stone. Was the client waiting for me downstairs? My detective intuition told me that it would be extremely dangerous to go downstairs. Well, even an idiot would know it was dangerous. But I knew I shouldn't go. I knew it was dangerous and it might be even be a trap. But my body was driven by an overwhelming impulse. What kind of detective would I be if I was afraid of such things? Besides, this is a rare opportunity to get to the bottom of what's going on in this town. Oh no, this seems like a- I have a bad feeling about this. I came to the alley below the window, but there was no one there. The night breeze gently blew up my face. I'm here. Show yourself. No one answered. Listen, I don't want to play hide and seek with you. If you want to get things done quickly, come out and talk. So stupid. What was I expecting? Huh? Who's there? I walked towards the source of the sound. Another alley nearby. It was pitch black. I turned on the flashlight on my phone. Suddenly, I could see someone lying motionless on the ground before me. I stepped closer, cautiously. The only sound I could hear was my own heartbeat in the silence. Excuse me? I had a very bad feeling. Huh? Sure enough, the body lying on the ground was a corpse. An open cavity in its chest. Its heart had been completely ripped out. <gasps> my legs immediately trembled with shock. I had to steady myself against the nearby wall. I wouldn't be this panicked if it was just an ordinary corpse. But... It it can't be. It, it's the same as that time. Oh no. There's a copycat murderer. No, the murderer died there and then. But why? Could this be a copycat killing? This is no mere imitation. The scene in front of me and my own memories flood my brain. I fell into an endless cycle of panic and fear. Damn it, I thought I was over this. <gasps> no. I couldn't help but pant heavily and my head throbbed in pain. Just as I was about to pass out, the sound of footsteps from behind pulled me back to sanity. Who is it? The client or the murderer? The footsteps were getting closer and closer. No, if it's the murderer, I won't be able to fight back now. If they have a weapon, I'll have no chance. I only have one choice. Run. Oh, this must be the route selection. Alright, let me save. Let's call. Ooh, let's take the... Let's go with Luke first. My body was almost paralyzed with fear. I had to find a place to hide. In a state of nervous breakdown, I tried my best to find a hiding place. I found a large wooden crate on the corner. It's dark here. No one will see me if I cover myself with the cloth. I can cross my fingers and hope that the person chasing me doesn't have good eyesight. I hid inside, but my body was still trembling. I need a miracle. I took my phone. The first thing I saw was Luke's number. That investigator seems to know something. He should be the right one to call, and he's smarter than an ordinary police officer. I was going to send him a message, but my hand shook so badly I couldn't even type a word. Damn it, stop shaking! However, my body didn't listen, so I had no choice but to simply send my coordinates. I hope he gets the meaning. I sat there with ants in my pants each second, feeling like an eternity. Then I heard footsteps again. <gasps> no! Has the murderer found me? The footsteps were getting closer. Please don't. Please don't. The lid over my head was lifted, and a bright light flooded my vision. Little bunny? <gasps> Mr. Luke. What are you doing here? It's you. Thank goodness. Anyway, come out first. He carried me out of the crate as if holding a small animal. He seemed to notice my condition and kept a hold of me. You know what? I was so excited when I received your message, thinking that you already missed me. But I didn't expect the first message I received was the coordinates. Oh. Yeah, I know. You found a dead body, right? I saw it when I came and immediately called for help. Don't be afraid. The police are already here and investigating the scene. What about the murderer? The murderer? I'm not sure, but someone was chasing me just now. Nope. We didn't see anyone suspicious around. Uh, alright. You don't look alright. You were much more vivacious this morning. He gently brushed my face. You feel so cold. Oh, poor bunny. You must have been really scared. The person you mentioned didn't do anything to you, right? No, but the dead body on the ground. Hmm? It was the same as that time. The heart was ripped out, but the murderer had already- Little bunny? Why? Just why? I began to sniffle again once I thought of the corpse. I don't want that kind of thing to happen again, huh? Suddenly, Luke pulled me to himself and sealed my lips. Whoa, already? <laughs> he stuck his tongue into my lips and took my attention away. <laughs> my once cold body had somehow regained its warmth. He kissed me with a poker face I reciprocated without knowing. We kissed for a while, then he finally released me. So, 
Did you calm down now? Uh. <laughs> Please, take my apologies. That's the only way I could think of. If that doesn't work, I have another advanced option. Jeez, look at his face. You oh God, he's so hot. No, thank you. <laughs> it seems you have your sanity back. Well, what you saw earlier, leave that to me. It's too dangerous, even though you're a detective. But what if he's connected to that incident in the past? What if he's the murderer? What should I do then? No way! I must track the real culprit down. I won't forgive him after doing such cruel things. And there's something I must ask him. In person. But you were so scared just now. Do you think you can do it? He said this while wiping my tears away with his hand. I'll get over it. I'll be sure to catch him next time. I don't want to live like this for the rest of my life. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't expect Little Bunny to have such determination. Alright. Wait for my good news then. Woohoo! We'll take that guy together, okay? Because... It'd be fun to watch you crying while catching the murderer. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I won't cry anymore. <laughs> I'll take you home. You should take a good rest. It's a digging sound. <sighs> Luke? Oh well, oh well. <laughs> For God's sake. Why the troubles keep coming? To be honest, I don't really enjoy doing these things. Luke? Why does he look so hot spotted with blood? But since little bunny came, <laughs> these things finally come with a meaning. Things are getting interesting. How will this town end up being? <laughs> Never thought you would choose me. Since you came knocking on the wolf's door yourself, I can't let you go easily, little bunny. What? I stumbled back to the apartment. I found Dane standing at the door with a serious face. You're back. Oh, Dane. Mm. Are you waiting for me? Mm. I was worried about you. I heard glass shattering just now, so I rushed to check what happened. But then I found that you weren't here. Mm. Sorry, I should have told you first. Don't do that next time. Are you hurt? Let me check. <sighs> Thank goodness. There's nothing I need to worry about, perhaps. What do you mean? N nothing I'm just glad you're okay. I'll fix the window in your room tomorrow. Fortunately, we have glass in the storage room. Uh, but I'm your landlord. It's my job to fix it. This is the nicest landlord I've ever met. I'll help them. I can't let you do it all by yourself. It's fine. It's nothing. You may sleep at my place tonight. I have a spare room available. I'm I'm so sorry I'm causing you trouble on the first day. It's not your fault, silly head. He gently stroked my head, and the warmth of his hand brought me comfort. I just hope that next time, no matter what happens, you'll think of me first, but not... Alright, you should go get some rest. The room is on the third floor. There's a private bathroom and toilet inside. Make yourself at home. I'll go and make some tea. Let's have it together later. Okay, thank you. Dane had already prepared the room for me. I caught a faint whiff of, an, of a comforting fragrance as I walk inside. Although he seems overly kind to me. Because he's so overly kind to me, I'm really grateful to him. Maybe he's just being nice to everyone. I laid on the fluffy bed, feeling extremely tired. I drank the tea Dane brewed for me while thinking about what had just happened. What's going on in this town? What's that corpse? Is it just a coincidence? Although, I still haven't recovered from the shock. I couldn't stop thinking about it. No, maybe I should read the documents again. Huh? Uh, huh? Wait, why do I suddenly feel so... tired? My vision became blurry. It's the tea. No, maybe I'm just exhausted. Mm. I gradually fell into a deep sleep. Everything that happened that day felt like a distant dream. But really, it was just the beginning. I was completely unaware that something was already happening in this town. I had no idea about the true intentions of the people approaching me. Most of all, I couldn't imagine that all of this had to do with me. Excuse me? Is anyone there? A woman was standing at the door of Clark Detective Agency. She looked anxious and kept ringing the doorbell. Mr. Clark, are you there? She shouted loudly, but the only answer she received was silence. Hey! Excuse me. Oh no! Crap! God, he's so hot. Why is he covered in blood? Oh dear. His voice is so hot. The woman was startled. She wasn't aware of anyone standing behind her. <gasps> Moreover, the man's shirt was covered in blood. The woman stood frozen in shock. Do you need something? 
Uh, I'm I'm looking for Mr. Clark for commission. It seems he's not in the office again. <laughs> Sid noticed the woman, staring at his shirt awkwardly, then realized he wasn't looking very presentable. He had just encountered a gang abusing animals on the street in a fit of anger. He'd left them all injured. Oh, don't mind the blood on my shirt. S sorry, I've got something urgent to do. I should go now. Before Sid could finish his sentence, the woman had already disappeared down the stairs. <sighs> Maybe I should bring a spare jacket with me next time. I'm back. As Sid opened the door, a pile of commission letters fell to the ground, all addressed to Clark. What's going on here? He looked around the office, thinking his boss was just napping as usual, but found himself alone. Even the person he was hoping to see wasn't there. Something felt out of place to Sid. Wasn't he the one who was always absent from office? He walked to her seat and noticed the brief commission letter on the desk. What's this? Usura Town? Mm, that was a great sleep! Huh? Where am I? Oh right, I almost forgot about last night. Dan let me sleep over at his place because of the broken window. I normally find it hard to sleep over at someone else's place, but I slept surprisingly well last night. All I remember from the night before was coming back from that near-death experience. Then Dane made me some tea and I fell asleep. Nothing special happened, I suppose. I got out of bed to freshen up, but I felt like a burning sensation in my chest. It was just like the previous morning. Hmm, this is strange. What's wrong with me? It wasn't only my chest. I could feel some kind of heat or energy flowing through my entire bloodstream. Did I catch something? I've never felt like this before. Fine, if it continues, I'll just go to the hospital. When I came out of the bathroom, I found that no one else was in the living room. It seemed Dane had already gone off to work. Just as I was thinking of going downstairs for breakfast, I noticed a breakfast set on the dining table with a handwritten note placed next to it. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, there's like eggs and bacon with sausages and there's looks to be like muesli, some coffee and some toast with jam. Good morning, Yinny. Did you sleep well? I'm off to work at the coffee shop. I made breakfast for you. If you like it. Yes, just leave the dishes on the table. I'll clean it up later. Dane. Dane even made breakfast for me. And it's a full breakfast. How could I repay such kindness? Also, he has such beautiful handwriting. It gives us such a gentle vibe like he does in person. With a heart full of gratitude, I pick up the cutlery and made a plan to thank him later. Oh my, it's incredibly delicious. I felt happiness in each bite. It was so good that I hesitated to finish it. I know Dane's a talented barista, but I didn't realize he's a good cook too. And all the dishes happen to be my favorite. Did I ever mention that to him? Whoever he winds up with is so lucky. I wonder if Dane's dating someone. Hmm? Who's calling so early? Huh? Sid. It's my childhood friend and co-worker, Sid. Ooh, the childhood friend? He's an elusive agency member. No one ever knows his whereabouts, but he never fails a commission. He's been missing for a month. I almost thought he quit. Hi, Sid? Where are you? I went to another town on the commission. So you're back in the office? Mm-hmm. That's great. I, I thought you quit. By the way, have you seen Clark? He's been ignoring my messages. He's not here. Uh, Clark's not in the office. Why didn't you refuse? What are you talking about? Why did you take that commission? I didn't want to, but the money is crazy. The fee for this one commission covers the agency's expenses for years. And you weren't there, Sin. I was the only one who could help out. I needed the cash for my travel fund anyway. Just tell me if you need money, but why? You should come back now. I'll take over. No, I've already decided to take it already. And Sid, do you remember what happened to my parents? I discovered a dead body last night, Sid, and it's very similar to my parents' case. There's something going on here, and I need to get to the bottom of it. Oh, and by the way, I'm safe now. I didn't need you to swoop in and rescue me. I'll be back in four months. I'll explain it all when I get back. Sid? Uh, are you listening? Ah, oh, fine. I'll get back to you later. Hey, don't get yourself in danger. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'll be back soon. You say that every time, and every time you get yourself in trouble. No, really. I'm coming to pick you up. That's it. Hey! Uh, hey, Sid! Oh, he's treating me like a child again. I really don't get him. Sometimes he disappears without a trace, and sometimes he seems pretty caring about me. You don't have to come for me. I'm an experienced detective. I can handle this. Don't worry. Okay, just wait for me. I, to I told him he doesn't have to come. Ah, oh, whatever. But anyway, where did Clark go? Sid said he wasn't in the office. I've got a bad feeling about this. I wish you could just reply to my messages. I've got so much to tell him. And just as I checked my empty inbox for the hundredth time, a news notification left me dumbfounded. 
Another horrific murder occurred in Usada town last night. The second case of heart ripping in a month. I couldn't believe my eyes. Wait, second case? So the dead body I saw yesterday was not the first victim. A phrase popped into my mind. Serial murderer. That makes me even more certain that it's connected to my parents' case. Calm down, Yini. You gotta calm down. I took a deep breath. I should analyze everything carefully. Perhaps the first case is what this W character wanted me to investigate. But there weren't any reports of this first case. My research yesterday confirmed it. Could the police be hiding something to avoid causing panic? Or is there some conspiracy behind it all? This town is so much more complicated than it seems on the surface. Or I should ask Mr. Luke first? He should know something. Besides, I want to ask if he can take me to the site of yesterday's incident for investigation. But I also have a good feeling that I should tell Dane about this. He takes good care of me. I don't want him to get worried. Oh no, what do I do? Hmm. I guess I'll, I'll call Luke this time. Let's call Mr. Luke first. I'll talk with Dane later. Uh, hi, little bunny. Oh, did he just wake up? Good morning, Mr. Luke. Mm, is this the morning call service? Oh, sorry. Did I wake you up? <laughs> it's okay. I'm happy that the first thing I heard in the morning was little bunny's voice. I'm fully awake now. In various meanings. What does that mean? Is Luke and then also Luke's Wim Wham awake? What does that mean? <laughs> Just kidding. It's time for me to get up anyway. So, what's the matter? Well, I just read the news of yesterday's incident. No, I should say series of incidents. Mr. Luke, the paper claims yesterday's killing was not a single case. It was part of a series of killings. Why didn't you tell me yesterday? Ah, uh, damn it. I knew some idiot was leaking internal information to the media. So it's true. It's not just a single case. Yep. Just as you said. It's a serial murder case. We named it The Heart Ripper. The Heart Ripper? Hey, wait, you're not supposed to tell me such confidential information, are you? It's okay. It'll leak anyway. It's just a matter of time. But you're calling me for other purposes, right? Tell me. What do you want to do? Uh, Mr. Luke, I'd like to look at the crime scene from yesterday. I knew the police should have cleaned up the scene, but I'd like to check if there are any other clues. Oh. Sure. Not a problem. Really? Yeah. I'm the special investigator. No one's gonna say a word. I see. That's perfect. But let's make a promise. No matter what you find, don't tell others. By others, I mean anyone. What about you? Got it. <laughs> All right then. Thank you, Mr. Luke. You're welcome. See you, little bunny. That went surprisingly smoothly. Come to think of it, why did Mr. Luke tell me everything so easily? Because we have the same target? Or because I'm a witness so I can help him in this investigation? I should ask what he thinks when we meet. There's still an hour left. I'll pack my stuff, go downstairs, grab a coffee, and tell Dane about this. When I got downstairs, I saw Dane making coffee. Good morning, Dane. Oh, hey. Good morning. I didn't know that you were awake. Thanks for breakfast. It was absolutely delicious. I'm glad you liked it. Did you sleep well? Thanks to you, I had a great sleep. <laughs> Don't mention it. Are you going out? Yep. I've got some investigation work, so I'd like to have a cup of coffee before I go. Uh, oh. Investigation work. Alright, what'd you like today? Mmm, maybe a cup of... Ooh, like a, I like cappuccino. I don't drink coffee, I just like the milk foam on a cappuccino. Sure. Am I too early? Why aren't there any other customers? Just when I was wondering this, a group of flashy looking men came in. Oh, they look familiar. Dane, good morning! Oh, he's so cute! Oh, look at him! I'm so happy to meet him! Four cups of latte with double shots, please. Oh, G Sharp, good morning. Did you stay up all night composing your songs again? That's right. My muse struck last night. Don't forget to add more milk for me. A man with a ponytail sat beside me, chatting with Dane with a big smile on his face. He exuded a mysterious charm that made my eyes fixate on him. He quickly noticed my gaze, then our eyes met. Huh? What are you looking at? You? Uh, oh, sorry. It's okay. I don't mind you staring even longer. Who are you, cutie? Gee, Sharp. Don't try to flirt with her. You've just come. She's my new tenant. New tenant? 
Oh, wow. So she's the first tenant in this building. The first tenant? Hi, I'm Yuri. I just moved to this town to open a detective agency upstairs. Wow, you're a detective? <laughs> you're so cool, babe. Say so, so bloody. Why are you calling me babe? We've just met. I'm G-Sharp, the lead vocalist of a well-known band. A band? Oh, you're the one on the poster. Yeah, that's us. Babe, are you interested in band music? Yeah, I love rock music. For real? <laughs> you gotta come in and watch our show. Promise? Give me your hand. Let's make a pinky promise. Oh, it's very forward. G-Sharp? Just as my hand was caught by G-Sharp, Dane heaved the box containing four takeout coffees in front of us. Your order's ready. Why do I feel like Dane's aura is different from usual? Thanks a bunch! Oh, Dane, your face looks so scary. Are you jealous? Ooh. <laughs> Why is this kind of hot? Nonsense. Boring. G-Sharp reminds me of, um, Marito from Buchigiri. Alright, uh, let's go. It's about time to do a rehearsal. I'll come play again. Let's hang out sometime, babe. Don't forget to come to our show. You're cute, but a little bit too flirty right off the bat for my liking. Bye-bye! Being such a vibrant person. Sorry if he scared you. It's just his normal behavior. Don't mind him. It's fine, it's fine. Do they come often? Well, G-Sharp was a regular customer even before being the band's vocalist. So you've known each other for a long time? Mm-hmm. He's actually my junior at the university. The university? He must be very popular during university. <laughs> no, of course not. I wasn't very good at chatting, so I didn't have many friends back then. Mm hmm? I've heard something like this before. Ah, Mr. Luke's calling. Dane, I should go now. Thanks for the coffee. Alright. Stay safe and don't be too late. Okay, see ya. I met up with Luke near the scene of the incident. From a distance, I saw him standing there with his arms crossed. It seemed like he'd already been there for a while. Mr. Luke! Good morning, little bunny. Oh, you look great today. Did you sleep well last night? Yeah, I feel great today. That's good to hear. I like a playful little bunny. Let's go. I've already told others to stay aside. You can investigate freely. No one will disturb us. I get special treatment. Although my mental condition has recovered so much, I still feel a bit nervous when I return to this place. Luke noticed my condition and patted me lightly on the shoulder. You don't have to do it today. Don't stress over yourself. I'm alright. It's daytime now, and with Mr. Luke here, there's nothing to be afraid of. Okay. Feel free to look around then. I'll be waiting here. Let me know if you need anything. Okay. Alright, where should I start? Okay, let's click on the... Can I investigate Luke? Because he's hot. He's so tall. There are a lot of empty wooden crates in the back alley. For some reason, I caught a whiff of some chemical when I walked close to it. The back alley walls are covered with posters on the band's soul. Reminding me of G-Sharp who came and spoke to me at the coffee shop. Although he feels like a playboy, he truly has an irresistible charm that makes me want to watch his band play. The corpse was already removed last night. Only the markings indicated the corpse's location remain. Hmm? I noticed something tiny and purple at the corpse's original location. I picked it up with the tool I brought with me and placed it on a piece of tissue paper. It was a broken pedal. Why is there a pedal here? Did it fall from someone? Interesting. I don't think there's anything else I can investigate, except for, yeah, go back and talk to Luke. How's it going, little bunny? Have you finished investigating? I'm done. Hmm, good job. So, how is it? This is your first time investigating a murder scene, right? There aren't many valuable clues, though. Is that so? Is there anything you want to ask, then? Mm, let me think. Mr. Luke, did you get dispatched to the town to investigate this case? Not really. In this town, there's a lot of things that go beyond your imagination other than the Heart Ripper. However, I can't tell you yet. Like what? Supernatural things? <laughs> You've got a good imagination. Who knows? Just remember, don't let a single case limit your thoughts. He's acting cryptic again. What was the first case like? Same as this one. The victim's heart was ripped out. The body was found in the West Alley by a passerby. The victims of both cases had moved to this town less than three months. 
Well, it may just be a coincidence, but you just moved here too. Be careful, little bunny. Are you cursing me? How's the investigation progressing on the police side? <laughs> Not much, actually. First off, there's only a few people who have a connection with the victims. It's difficult for us to speculate the motive behind it. Second, the police cannot speculate what kind of weapon the murderer used. And not many of them take the investigation seriously. <laughs> what? It's a serial murder case. How can they not take it seriously? That's why I prefer to work with you, little bunny. Mr. Lu, have you heard of someone or an organization named W? W? I've told you someone threw a stone at my window, right? That stone has a signature W carved into it. I see. Well, there's a lot of people with names starting with W, but an organization? Didn't ring a bell to me. I'll keep an eye out for it. I've got no further questions. It's strange coming from me, but... Mr. Lu, aren't you curious as to why I want to catch this murderer so much? I mean, why aren't you asking me anything? Little bunny, do you want me to ask you? Huh? Tell me when you feel like it. You must have your own reason why you won't tell me. I won't force you. Why? Why do you trust me so much? We just met. What you want to know is if I have an ulterior motive. Baby? I stood in silence. He was right. I averted my eyes, but he grabbed my shoulders. <laughs> I'm not sure if you'll count this as a motive, but there's something I want. What is it? He leaned closer and whispered in my ear. Little bunny. Your heart. Uh, Luke, you're very sus right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do I sound like the heart ripper? I was shocked by the unexpected words from Luke and stood frozen. What do you mean? <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'm just trying to say I hope you can trust me with all your heart. He brought his lips close to my ear, his warm breath tickling me. Because I'm very interested in you. No matter whom you want to catch or what clues you need, I'll give it to you. Wait, what? But you must never lie to me. If you lie to me, I'll eat you up any time. If you obey me, I'll reward you. Oh no. Otherwise, I don't know what I might do to you. I mean, this is already, this is a threat. Oh, then one more thing. Once you've chosen me, don't bother anyone else. Greedy bunnies get slaughtered. So you gotta be a good bunny, okay? Stop, stop! I quickly pushed him away, just as I was losing my sanity. What are you doing? I've no idea what you're talking about, stop fooling around! And don't try to confuse me. I don't know what you've misunderstood, but there's one thing I can promise you. I want to catch that heart ripper more than anyone else. I just really like you, little bunny. I'm looking forward to our next investigation. All right, I've got some work to do. Let's end it here for today. I'll contact you again. I watched Luke leave. My heart was still pounding quickly. So he was just fooling around. Even if he's the heart ripper, he couldn't have been the murderer in my parents' case. He would have been a little kid at that time. Unless it's a copycat killing. Or some deeper scheme. Besides, I heard he was on duty elsewhere yesterday. He has a sound alibi. But in any case, he definitely has some suspicious motivations. I'll have to keep an eye on him. Ah, why does Mr. Luke have to flirt with me in such a situation? My heart was actually fluttering just now, this is insane! I gotta go back to the office and clear my mind, and organize the clues. Before returning to the office, I popped into a nearby store for some water. When I was leaving, I heard the sound of an argument. A man with a video camera was trying to talk to a man and a woman. I said, what was that chemical you had in your hands just now? We didn't know what you're talking about, go away! Don't play dumb, I saw you dealing with someone. A liquid with that color must be something special. Can I have a look? I'll pay for it. No, please leave. Just a quick look, okay? Or you can tell me the secret of this town. I'm really interested. I won't put your names in my report. Get out of my way. The man pulled the woman onwards and they barged past the man with the video camera before heading off as quickly as they could. I don't have to be so scared. I finally come to this town. I won't give up easily. It's all for my new column. He's gonna get murdered. That person seems to be a journalist. What's that chemical they mentioned just now? Is it some type of drug? That person is not going to survive. With a head full of lingering confusion, I returned to the office. An anxious man was hovering at the doorway. Uh, oh, um, is, is this a det detective agency? Y yes, 
How can I help you? Can you deliver a package for me? Huh? He wore a tattered hoodie, and his hair was so long that I could barely see his face. Even so, I could see the beads of sweat forming on his face. Are you okay? Would you like to come in and have some rest? The man didn't reply. Instead, he took a stack of cash from his pocket and placed it on my desk. Is that enough? That's a, that's a lot of money. Sir, may I ask what you're delivering? This, um, this envelope. Please deliver it to the address above. Please don't worry, there's nothing suspicious inside. Can you tell me what's inside? I can't accept so much money without a reason. I don't know anything, thank you, ma'am. Sir, please wait. I tried to catch up with the man, but he was too fast and disappeared as soon as he left the door. What's going on? He's running so fast. Oh god, don't tell me he's handed me a bomb. I gingerly looked down at the thin envelope on the table. It seemed to only contain a few sheets of paper. Oh damn it, even though I didn't really accept the money, I better see this through. If something gets weird, I'll just pull out. I took a taxi to the address on the note. It was surprisingly close to the office. Is this the place? I stopped outside the given address. It was for a detached house with several floors. It's huge. The owner must be really wealthy. Oh god, I hope it doesn't belong to some mafia boss or something. After waiting for a minute, I heard footsteps coming. <sighs> I told you to just leave it in the mailbox. Huh? That voice. A familiar face opened the door. Mr. Enox. <sighs> Huh? He just freaks out every time he sees me. Hi, so this is your house? Enox abruptly slammed the door as if something had triggered his nerves. Huh? I heard a faint sound of something breaking inside the house, then Enox cried in pain. Ah! What's that sound? Did he fall? Mr. Enox, what happened? Are you okay? The door opened, and Mr. Enox looked disheveled and was panting heavily. It Get in here! Before I could react, he gripped my hand tightly and pulled me inside the house. Oh, wait, hang on a second. <laughs> Mr. Enox, what do you want? What do I want? That should be my question. How did you know I live here? No, it's not like that. I had no idea this was your house. Ridiculous. Ordinary people won't even find this place. You did approach me with a purpose. Did you put a tracker on me? I said no. Please listen to me. Do you want to die by my hands that badly? W what? Since you came to this town, my body hasn't been normal for a single day. Why are you doing this to me? What do you want from me? What is he babbling about? I can't understand a word he's saying. Since you've brought yourself here, I'll show you no mercy. He took a syringe from somewhere and pressed it against my chin. You're gonna die by my hands today. Is he crazy? Let go of me! No way! I struggled, but his grip was too tight, and for some reason my chest began to feel that burning sensation again. <gasps> Damn. I knew it. I can smell that from you again. He talks about my scent with that face again. I couldn't tell why, but that expression on his face eased my fear. <sighs> I gotta hold it in. I won't let you go again like yesterday. Now, run! I broke free from Enox. He couldn't react in time and dropped the syringe in his hand. Ugh! I just realized that the needle tip of that syringe is made of rubbery material and not sharp at all. Why? He didn't really mean to kill me? Enox was still trying to catch me while panting desperately. You're not getting away from me! I shoved his hand from me and thrust the envelope in his face. Someone asked me to deliver this to you. Please take it. My job is done. Huh? And Mr. Enox? I don't know why you're so sensitive, but it's rude to pin someone against the wall suddenly. If I tried to explain it to you, you just wouldn't listen. I was asked to deliver something to your house. I didn't even know you lived here. I'm sorry if I make you feel uncomfortable, but I don't think I deserve to be treated this way. I thought you were... nice. Seems I was wrong. I took the handkerchief from my pocket, which I had washed this morning. Here. This is... I've washed it. Please take it, and I hope we don't meet again. I walked towards the door without looking back. I was too angry to care about him trying anything. Hey! Bye for good. What? Hey, you better not show up again, you damn woman! Let's see what crap you brought me. Enox tore open the envelope and angrily. To his surprise, there was only a handwritten letter inside. I brought that girl to you. Are you happy with the delivery? What the? Enox knew from a quick glance who had written the letter. Someone he despised intensely. Ah! Fucking asshole! Wait, so I've blamed the wrong person? Wait, who sent me to him though? Uh, the whole house is filled with the scent of that woman. Uh, my pants! 
He's not having a good time. I returned to the office and saw the commission fee on the table. The amount was substantial, but it felt tainted to me now. Although I've only been the detective for a few years, I've encountered many situations where dangerous people have threatened me. I can't say you ever get used to that kind of thing. At least I don't feel as shaken as an untrained civilian would in my shoes. However, the scene just now left me confused. Since the moment we first met, Enox had been saying things I couldn't understand. He was rude and unreasonable. Why would he treat me like that? I didn't do anything. What was all that talk about sense and that feeling in my chest? Enox's blushing face lingered in my mind. Hmm? Did I overreact just now? Perhaps I hurt his feelings. No. What am I thinking? He almost killed me. Oh, damn it. It's time to forget about him. I've already given him back his things. I've got no connection with him anymore. I better focus on the investigation. A week later. Alright, that's it for today. Let's get something to eat. Hmm? What's that sound? Did something fall? I look around the room and saw a basket on the windowsill. Who mm -hmm. put that there? I opened the window and saw a pink bear and a letter in the basket. That's cute. I couldn't help but recall the broken window incident and was immediately on edge. I look around and downstairs but there was no one there. Did W send this? I opened the letter and couldn't believe the words written on it. To Miss Yenny, sorry. Enox. What? Huh? Am I reading this right? Is this from Mr. Enox? The Mr. Enox who's so sensitive and wanted to kill me. He's apologizing and giving me a teddy bear? Perhaps it's got a hidden camera inside it? I checked the teddy bear. But I didn't find anything suspicious, nor could I detect any hard objects inside. Is this really from Mr. Enox? Phone ringing. It's from Enox. Speak of the devil. Hi? Did you receive it? Huh? Oh, you mean the pink bear and the letter? Okay then. Why did you... Sorry. That's it. I stare blankly at the phone for a moment. Huh? I really don't get him. I stare at the teddy bear in my hand. My brain was a mess of static. Should I forgive him? Alright, fine. Alright. Maybe he's just a bit atypical or bad at socializing. He doesn't seem to have full control of his actions. If I wasn't so paranoid all the time, there might be a good person beneath it all. And he didn't really want to kill me, did he? But I don't think there's any reason to contact him again. Unless he's connected with the Heart Ripper case or whoever commissioned me. <laughs> I guess not. I placed the teddy bear on the shelf. I have to admit, it was pretty darn cute. Oh my god. Dane turned the shower on full blast. Until the water was loud enough to block out the noise in his head. Oh my god. Oh my god. Jeez. Not the spicy shower scene. He looks he looks so good too. God. Since Yinny had come to this town, he needed to concentrate more than ever. <sighs> it had been two weeks since she moved here. Time passes so fast. In just two weeks, she'd met so many people already. The situation's harder to control than I thought. A huge scar. Hmm. A huge scar suddenly appeared on Dane's left chest, glowing dimly. That's weird. <sighs> Every time the scar appeared, Dane suffered intense pain. I can't learn his lesson. I gotta hurry. I finally get you to this town to build our happy home. I won't let anyone get in our way. I need to get more serious. That's interesting. Huh. In the rehearsal room, Sol's warm-up had just finished. G-Sharp was sitting on the couch while looking at the photos he just collected. He's really cute. G Sharp, what are you looking at? He seems so happy. Hmm? I'm looking at my muse. Muse? You've got a new date? <laughs> Soon. I must make be mine. Huh. Interesting. Sid stood atop a building on the outskirts of Usada town, silently observing from a distance. Ooh, we got that anime protagonist moment from Sid. It's so foggy. No wonder I couldn't find it all this time. It was from Clark. It was the third time he had called. Want me to stay out of it, huh? Unfortunately, I'm more of a stubborn type. Clark is doing something sus? I'll take that idiot back, even if I have to kidnap her. A month later, I was already used to life in Usala town. But there was no news of the Heart Ripper anymore. There were no new victims, but he was still out there, walking among us. What should I do? While I was pondering, I received three messages at exactly the same time. Hi little bunny, are you available? There's a case I'd like your help with. I'd like to hire you as my temporary assistant. Reply to me ASAP. I'm sorry for asking so suddenly, but would you come and help me at my store? Oh no! Wait, who do, who do I even pick? I don't even know who I'm going to choose. 
I mean, probably. I don't know. I want to do all the routes. They they all seem like really interesting characters. Yay! That's that's demo. I think. Okay. I want to try and go back and pick some other answers and see what happens. I'm gonna see if it changes anything in particular. So this time, I'm gonna pick to call Enox and see what happens. I forced myself to run, even though I felt like I could collapse at any moment. <sighs> I was too scared to look back, so I just kept running. I hated myself for being a coward. I hated myself for being as weak as I was. I hated myself for failing to get over that trauma. Why? I promised to become a strong person so I could live on my own. Just before I reached the line of the main road, I bump into a shadow figure that appeared suddenly. Oh! <laughs> oh no, who is it? What? You... You're the woman from this morning! So it was Mr. Enox, the one I met during the day. Why is he here? Hello, Mr. Enox. My body was still trembling with fear making me accidentally lean into Enox. Uh, what's up with you suddenly? Uh, I'm sorry. Damn it, move my body. I I can't even speak clearly. Hey, what's wrong with you? He held on to my body, which could barely support itself. S someone's dead. What? That person, the heart was gone. What did you say you saw? It was the same as that time. But the murderer was already... <laughs> Why? It's so scary. I couldn't help but mutter to myself before bursting into tears. <sighs> Damn it. Why you of all people? What? What a troublesome woman. Come here. Look at me. What are you doing? Oh, he's so cute. He's so Stop cute. Stop crying. He's so cute. But he grabbed my hands when I didn't notice and put them on his cheeks. The warmth of his face, no, his whole body, reached my hands. What's this? His face was so cold. Have you calmed down now? Yes, I kept staring at him. Seriously, why would I do this? Despite his cold words, he showed a relieved expression, only for a moment. Listen, forget what you saw. Don't think about those things. The only thing you need to know is you're safe now. Don't be afraid. I thought he was strange and rude, but now seeing him comforts me. But why does his body feel so cold? Thank you, Mr. Enox. I'm much better now. May I ask? <laughs> Uh-oh. Suddenly, he seemed to be stimulated by something. His entire body trembled slightly. Mr. Enox? Ah, uh, bloody hell. Why at this time? I almost forgot about your smell. Damn it. Smell? Again? Uh, 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 it's, it's very moody. Uh, Mr. Enox, are you alright? You woman. Uh, why? What are you? What did you do to my body? Uh, didn't you set up for this? Did you? I, I don't understand what you're saying. I didn't expect to meet you here either. No. I can't. Mm take this anymore. He instantly slapped my hand away. Listen carefully. I'll let you go this time. But next time we meet, I must get you. Enox turned away with a flushed face and disappeared around the corner. Oh, please wait, Mr. Enox. He's gone again. Who the heck is he? Oh, right, the corpse. I should call the police now. <sighs> Damn it! What the hell did I just do? I should have killed her instead of falling into her trap. Damn it! It's getting hard again. Oh boy. This again. Hi. I just. Hi. Just got home. What? Are you following me again? So she arrived, the chosen girl. I didn't expect you to meet her on the first day. It's not very often to see you interested in someone. Fuck off. Save your bullshit. Who's calling? I left the new commission in your mailbox. I've also included that girl's information. You're welcome. I don't need it. Go fuck yourself. Damn it. Why does it have to be her? I don't care if she is the chosen one or not. I'll kill her next time. Even if not killing her, I'll find a way to deal with her anyway. I can't let her do this to my body again. Yeah, okay, so the rest of the route 
seems pretty much the same. Alright, let's call Dane this time. I should get back to the apartment. It's the closest place to here. At this moment, Dane's face came to my mind. The man who had looked so reliable. I should go back and ask him for help. I can't think of anyone else to ask. I dragged my unsteady body and tried to find another route to get back to the apartment. Come on, get moving. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> An eerie voice came from behind. Uh, who's that? You better take a different direction if you're trying to run away. It was the owner of the footsteps? Who are you? Don't turn around. Unless you want to end up like that guy over there. I froze as I was about to turn around. That person. Did you kill him? He didn't answer. Who are you? Why are you doing this? That's not what you want to know, is it? Oh boy. <gasps> a voice, which should have come from a distance, was suddenly right next to my ear. So close. When did he move to my back? Y you Don't be afraid. I won't kill you. Not now, at least. You want to know why that guy lying there looks exactly like the body you saw as a child, right? <gasps> what are you saying? You want to know if it's a copycat or a coincidence. Let me tell you, it's not a coincidence. His words brought vivid memories of that day to my mind. No, you're lying. The murderer back then was already... Who are you? Don't trust anyone easily. Remember that. We shall meet again, chosen one. But when I turned my head, that person had disappeared, without a trace, as if it were only a phantom. I was dumbfounded. I sank to the ground with legs that were too weak to stand. Hey! In a daze, I could only make out someone's anxious face looking over me. Dane? Are you alright? He fell to his knees and held me tightly in his arms. I heard glass shattering just now, then I saw you were gone. I was so worried about you. What happened? I just saw... I was so devastated. I couldn't even begin to complete my sentence. My vision began to blur. <laughs> I got you. You don't have to say anything. He lifted me up and let me lean against his chest without saying a word. I'm here. You're safe now. I'll take you home now. Don't worry. His gentle voice calmed my racing thoughts like a sedative, and soon I drifted to sleep in his arms. Hmm? What's that smell? Oh, you're awake. Dane, where am I? This is my home. I saw the broken window in your room. I fixed it with wooden boards for now. It's still not safe, though. I'll fix it again tomorrow. You may sleep at my place tonight. I have a spare room available. I'm so sorry I'm causing you so much trouble on the first day. It's just what I should do. It's not your fault anyway, silly head. He gently stroked my head, and the warmth of his hand brought me comfort. Here, have some chamomile tea. Can't take that word seriously anymore because I found a TikTok ages ago where the person pronounced chamomile as shamamale. <laughs> Thank you. I took the cup from Dane, but horrible images suddenly rushed into my mind and my hand began to shake. <laughs> Sorry. Huh? Dane wrapped my trembling hands with his hands. It's my fault. I should have looked after you more carefully. I thought I had prepared enough. Prepared for what? Why are you apologizing, Dane? <sighs> Because it's my responsibility. I won't let anyone hurt you. We should have the tea later. I had only taken a sip of the tea, but Dane took it away and suddenly leaned closer to me. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Dane, what, what are you doing? <laughs> he pressed his face against my neck, and I could feel his warm, rapid breathing. It tickles, and my body is getting hot. Don't move. I'm just trying to help you relax. I don't get it. What are you doing? And I noticed. Dane's flushed face. I don't know how to explain, but I'm sure you'll forget those horrible things for a while. <sighs> oh, oh, we're going there. Dane started kissing my collarbone and neck. My body was starting to become hot and... What is this? What is this haze I'm in? Am I drunk? Luckily, I have this ability. What do you even... <laughs> he pinned me down on the bed, pressed against my body and kept leaving marks on my neck. Sorry. Just the shoulders and neck will be enough to work for today. I'll try to be gentle. Even though I wanted to resist, it started to feel so good. What's happening? The fear I'd been feeling was quickly replaced with waves of pleasure. But why? Who is Dane, really? Don't think about anything else. Just focus on me. I will take away all your worries. I'm the only one who can protect you. Because you're my... What did he say? I couldn't catch that. Strange. Why am I feeling more and more tired? I began to drift in and out of consciousness, and eventually fell asleep. Okay, I am really interested in this. 
after finding out that Dane had like has like a mysterious scar that appears on his chest and whatever the heck he can do here, there's like something like supernaturally happening. Alright. She's asleep. It seems this really works. If something like this happens next time, I'll cure you again. Although, it might go even further than today. Oh boy. Don't worry. I'll make a happy home just for you and me. I'll make you happy. Oh no. Sweet dreams, my dear. That was so interesting though. I've been- I really really like that. The art was really good and the story is really intriguing. I was a big fan of the detective setting because I, you know, I really like um, investigation settings and like crime settings like that. But the fact that there seems to be something supernatural at play seems very very intriguing as well. Because I want to find out what's going on with Dane. I also want to find out why Enox is so sensitive to smells. And but when, why is there someone sending me to this town as well? If you guys would like to check out this demo, which I highly, highly recommend, I put the link in the description box below. Uh, if you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And if you feel like leaving a comment, I would absolutely love that. I adore talking to you guys. But thank you so much for watching again, and until next time, take care.